Welcome to the More Business, More Life podcast. And today my guests are Giovanni Casals and Alvaro Dominguez. And we are going to talk about how do we close out this year? How do we give ourselves compassion and kindness with, you know, maybe we've had some struggles this year. We've had these things happen. How can we give ourselves some self-love and how does that uh, parlay into what we want for the new year and how important it is to take that pause for yourself. Uh, and we're going to, let's, let's explore that. How does that look? What happens when it's difficult? Cause it sometimes is for all of us. How do we make it easier for ourselves? And we're going to explore this and more. So let's jump into this episode. Hey guys, uh, great to have you on the show today. Um, we are here closing out this year that we call 2020, right? I think my favorite meme was the Back to the Future one. And Doc is telling Marty, Marty McFly about the time machine, the DeLorean. They're sitting on the edge of the car. And it says, whatever you do, the first rule of time travel, never, ever put 2020 in. <laughs> I thought that was out of all the craziness. I mean, you know, but maybe you should, and then he can change, change it. Yeah. Right. There could be some opportunity. So the thing that I guess I want to say for today's podcast is how do we close this year out? And so my, my thoughts are, you know, whatever it was, you know, for some of us, it was harder than others. We all went through change. I think everyone has had to be flexible, and then as we look onward for where we're going to go, I, th- you know, I think, you know, the thing that comes to me is how can we be compassionate uh, and kind to ourselves, you know, like whatever was or wasn't, you know, I guess for the things that was uh, we can celebrate and the things that weren't the way that we want, how can we, you know, allow ourselves for a reset and have compassion because we're going to move into this new year. It's, um, you know, for a lot of people, it's always been the new year's resolution, a fresh start. I think we all like to have more than one a year, you know, like we want to reset almost every day, but just in reflection, um, I'm curious how the both of you, Giovanni and Alvaro, how do you, how do you allow yourself to reset? You know, like when you come to the close of something, whether it went the way you want or not, you know, um, how do you, how do you allow yourself, uh, forgiveness, I guess, in a way, like kind of forgiving yourself, letting go so that you can just start fresh. Um, I don't know. I, I think that what I've, I've been learning because it's not always, a, it's not been always the same, but something that I've been learning is to realize that we are constantly learning. And so we are constantly adapting, right? Most of us or many of us um, getting to this like tremendously humongous goals and push and push and push and push and push and and we don't even stop to think what how come what are we doing this for and um so one of the things that i'm i'm still learning a lot you know is to stop and smell the roses right stop and say like what am i doing how come and what have i learned right what are the things that are actually working and celebrate those? That's really important, I think. You know, so it's like, hey, we're doing good. You know, these, are, these things are working. And the other one is like, if the things are not working exactly how we want them, what, how would we would like them to look? How would, how would we like them to be? And that is a, um, what I'm finding is that that is a really important reflection that allows us to make those, you know, tiny changes because nothing is drastic just like those small changes that have those big results so that's how i would say and i i love what you're adding in here to the conversation and alvaro it's beautiful because and it's what i found and and while i want to get over to you giovanni i found it like just even recently well one just overall i've seen it like dozens of people really rethinking their life in this year because that whole why what am i doing 
has become even more priority during all these changes. But then I also have noticed uh, just this year, a lot of us got busy doing stuff. Some people like never had homeschooled their kids or different things. So like there was a lot of busyness in this year, like because of the change, people got to work and not everyone, but some people were ended up having more work, even though some people were out of work. I know a number of people had more work. And then they're, they're coming to me. A lot of people are coming for consultation and the clients that are coming to me, they're saying, Steve, we're having trouble planning. And you know what I've noticed, Alvaro, to your point, they're not pausing. It's hard to make a plan. If you don't pause, it's like not having a huddle. It's like, go to the next play. Well, what are we doing? It doesn't matter. Go. And then you're like, go. And then, and, and if you're go, go, go in your life, you're not actually taking the time back. Like you said, to smell the roses And in smelling the roses, taking that pause, that permission to pause, you're able to then start strategizing for the next step. And, you know, I find many people that say, I I can't figure out how to get a plan. They most likely haven't taken enough break to take that time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you want to, or if you want to comment on that, Alvaro first, or Giovanni, if you want to jump in, but. Go for it, Alvaro. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, if you give me a rope, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. I saw your face. You're like, I, I got more. I got more. Go, go for it, brother. Um, I think that um, we, it's so important to, to, to stop and reflect back where we are, but also, and, and this goes together, like, where are we with others? Right. Because so many times we just get, you know, in this go, go, go about whatever it is that we have on ourselves. Right. And everything is about what we need to do. And we don't get we don't get engaged enough with all the significant others that we have in our lives. And uh, we put like priority work and we sacrifice many times our most precious relationships with our families and with our friends. And uh, which means that we're putting ourselves, you know, on a second plate and we put our responsibilities up front. And that has a toll, that has a huge, huge toll in uh, how we feel in our productivity and uh, in our whole life experience. And uh, so, you know, that uh, that's, putting a, a pause for a second and it's like, hey, where are we? How are we doing? And reaching out and celebrating uh, being with others. And particularly this year that has been so weird and we've, uh, by need, we've had to isolate, right? And right now for me, it's so precious to, you know, the few times that I have, you know, to interact with people and uh, which is, barely with on one on on a physical basis right but those that have fortune to to have that you know family and stuff like that close by wow you know uh i don't know yeah no i i I, I agree you know how many times i've put you know the people that are most precious to me to the side it's it's taken for granted and it's not like a conscious decision but it's like oh they're there so I better work on this now because they're, they're all, they're there. You know, it's like some, it's almost like uh, you rely on that, but it also uh, sacrificing that too long. And I had in, in previous parts of my life when I was complete workaholic sacrifice, that's a point of break point, you know, where it wasn't going to work. And even now, as you were saying that I'm loving the words, I'm like, you know, taking notes over here myself because, you know, it's just another reminder, like how many times can I give more time to those those folks that are most important to me, just like I would to clients. And there was a period of time in my life where I would put, give more time to clients than my own, uh, you know, people that are the most important to me, like my wife and my kids. And so now I really am as conscious as I can be. But I'm going to take a note right now, even though I'm way better than I was before, I can take note to your words right now, Alvaro, and say, hey, how can I do it more? How can I be there more? 
what what do you think, Giovanni? What's what's the best way? Like, you know, so if you're reflecting on this, whether it's, hey, I didn't give enough time to my significant other, or I didn't do this or whatever, it's all those, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. I find a lot of people get to this end of the year, you know, either someone's celebrating, they're like, oh my gosh, I made it through 2020 and I want it to be over. Or they're reflecting and saying all these things that shoulda, coulda, woulda. Um, if those things pop in your head, Giovanni, and I don't know if they if they do, but if they how do you reset? How do you give yourself self-compassion and say, Hey, I'm going to reset and I'm going to allow this and, and just be what, what, what's your best strategy? Um, I don't know if it's always conscious when I do do it. Um, I think a lot of times it's just kind of just, I forget about it. Like, I, it, I don't know. It's weird. I'm, as I was, I was contemplating the question as Alvaro was talking um, and I was like, how do I do, how do I reset? And a lot of times it is, is, you know, it's the end of the day, it just kind of naturally resets. Like you go to sleep. Sometimes, some days, like things will carry over. But a lot of times I find just naturally for me, either it's my, just my brain, like, okay, let's just forget it or bury it down somewhere. And then it'll come up some other time. But <laughs> for now, uh, that's what I kind of noticed. But then um, something that came up to me as you was, was asking the question again, though, was, um, is, uh, Carl Bukai, what he taught all three of us, right, is the oh wow thing, right? The whole process of OMG, WTF, OK. And then I, I, I love the last part of it is like, what would I like now, right? Um, and I, when I first learned that, I seriously, and I think we've, I've said this on the podcast before, like, I was like telling every person I could who would listen to me, like, hey, I just learned this new thing. You'll love it. It's called, oh, wow. And I like, just explaining the whole thing. And I'm like, like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm like, everybody goes through this process anyway, but nobody, like very few people actually do the last part of, well, actually the last two parts of saying, okay, and then what would I like? And that what would I like part, I think is a, is a huge thing for, uh, for me just because, okay, if I am, if something does carry over from the day, the week, month, year, whatever, I'm just like, I'm still in the same fuzz, like, okay. Once I finally accept it and just saying, okay, and then I ask myself that question, what would I like instead? Or what would I like now? Or what, what, how do I want to feel? What would I want to, what would I like to feel? Like it gives myself to pause and actually really think about it. Okay. What do I want instead? And then it allows me to kind of, okay, I'm tired of feeling this way. Let's try something else. Um, and so that I think is, I don't always do that consciously these days, but I think it's always kind of running in the background. And then when I am conscious about it, then I do ask myself that question. And it's, it's been really power, powerful for me to kind of just ask myself what I would like. And I think that in itself has that self-compassion because you're asking yourself instead of just keep beating yourself up like, oh my gosh, I'm sick and tired of this. And then you just go back to doing the same thing. But when you ask that question, it almost allows yourself to let that go. It's like, okay, I am tired of this and that's totally okay to be tired of something that you don't want anymore, but then asking yourself, what would I like instead? Or what would I like now? Like just allows, I don't know, for me, just a lot of, a lot of stuff starts moving. And it just, I think yeah. as we're talking about it, it just allows the compassion to yourself. It's like, yeah, it is okay to ask yourself what you would like. I think so many people do put themselves on the back burner, right? As Alvaro was saying, um, even not just our loved ones, but ourselves, right? Because right. even when we're working and like, if you're a workaholic, you're not just neglecting your family and stuff. You're usually neglecting yourself. You're not taking care of your health. You're not taking care of your mind. Not, you should not take care of your spirit, like all that stuff. So uh, within that whole, oh, wow, like it sums it up all for me, like brings it, brings it back. Yeah. And it's, when we're uh, doing that, like, like, how come, how, where did we learn, right? To put ourselves as, you know, on the back burner, right? that any, everything and anything else uh, takes precedent to our wants and to our needs and to our, you know, sometimes even to our well-being, right? Yeah. Um, and as Giovanni was saying, so many of, that's, of those things uh, are out of our conscious awareness. And, uh, and the practice of bringing it up front and being able to to consciously look at them and feel them, it's uh, 
Sometimes it's really hard. <laughs> it's the hardest to look in the mirror. That's why it's so, that's why it was the thing that changed my life was having coaches, like hiring people to be in my life because they can point those things out quicker than us and helping that mechanism. But then as you do it more and more, then you become more self-aware. Like you were, you were alluding to Giovanni. I think you were saying, you said, you know, that now you're getting quicker at it and you're, it's just kind of starting to happen, you know, but it's, it's having that self-awareness first to notice. Um, and that's why I love plan tomorrow today. Like that whole idea to give ourselves permission. Again, I keep using that word permission, but like give yourself the opportunity to choose because that's ultimately what it is. You know, like I thought that life when I, when I was younger, I thought life was just crappy and this is the way it was. And you just have to deal with it. You just have to be tougher. And that's what my family taught me. And then, you know, you go back to like who taught us this stuff. I mean, it goes so deep. I mean, we're talking like hundreds, if not thousands of years now of all kinds of things in society that has permeated this, this, this way that we think now when it's, when it's not really good for any of us, like if you take care of yourself, I do believe this. If you take care of yourself, you're going to be able to take care of your family better Then you're going to be able to take care of your neighbors. You're going to be able, like, you have more, uh, you know, and you brought it, I think you brought it up Giovanni. It's like that. And you said something starts to flow more. And I think it is the energy, you know, so where our focus goes, energy flows. That's a uh, saying that I totally believe in where our focus goes, energy flows. And so if we're focused on beating ourselves up, right, just think about it. Like, oh, it didn't go the way I want. And you're just like in that, in that mire, right? Just like, you know, kind of putting yourself in that, then our focus is going to be in that dark space. And if we could actually get ourselves in, it, it didn't work until I met Carl because I met this meditation coach and he said the same thing. He said, if you have this negative thought, just tell yourself it stops here because you have control, you can choose. And they told me that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds right. I get it. I get it. But it never worked. I'm like, yeah, how do you tell yourself? Yeah, good, good for you. I'm like, how do I tell myself that stops here? And then it maybe it stops for a minute. And then the next minute I'm thinking about this horrible thing again. But it was when Carl said, you have to, you know, that whole, okay. And what would I like now that actually made the conversion for me, Giovanni. And I'm glad you brought this up because then when I said, okay, this stops here and I could get my point to now, what would I like now? My mind would shift its focus and then I would focus on that new thing or focus on myself or different things. Um, and so I think that the couple quick things for me is one, you have to give yourself space to have this conversation with yourself. That's where like meditation or journaling comes in for me. And then if that's difficult for you, then I highly recommend getting someone else in your life that can be the eyes that are watching that are helping you because, and even for me, I still have that. I have coaches. I'm part, I'm going into a, a workshop this evening for my, that, that my wife and I are going to improve ourselves. Like we're constantly investing in ourselves because we cannot see on ourselves as much as we can see others, you know? So, um, but this is all great conversation giving, I think that you know, give yourself space and then hire someone to help you or be around uh, groups. Are there any other like well, quick tips that you would say to someone that's just hearing this for the first time or. I don't know. Or, I, what, what came to mind was just to echo what you were saying about, you know, the self-development and taking courses and, you know, having people guide you. I mean, I've taken courses, like repeatedly, you know, auditing or, you know, being a TA. And it, every once in a while, they're like, oh, I, it, it has a whole different understanding. It's like reading, rereading a book that is very transcendental. It's just like there's different layers of depth that we start to get because we have changed, right? So that is this essential. Um, you know, they say money changes people. And that saying always kind of, I, I caught it, you know, you to have money, it's not money doesn't change you, you have to change the habit and you have to change to have anything you could replace money with anything to have the relationship you want yes. to have to have uh, to feel okay with yourself to have whatever you want. If we want that, it's not that thing that's going to change us. That's where people are driving. They think when I get that, then I'll be happy. But the reality is we have to change to have that thing, which is coming to, to, to what you're saying. You know, so how can you continually invest in yourself? And since this is our closing episode for the year, just even ponder that. What money or time, because it's not always money, you can bring yourself around people that doesn't cost you money, but who are you going to spend time with and, and where are you going to invest in yourself into the new year? Have you even thought to have a budget for that? You know? Yeah. And what does happiness 
and being okay mean? Yeah, for you. <laughs> that's a huge it, one. It's for different for everyone. But right. so writing that down, that's a great one to write down. That's a beautiful question, Alvaro. Because how many of us have given pause enough to ponder that in a long time? Maybe you did when you were younger and then you're like, oh, when I have this, I'll be happy. Oh, how so? What, will, what about that will make you happy? Well, having that do for you. And we start asking questions like that and people go, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I need to rethink what I'm asking for. And also being okay, like things are okay and not to, to take away some of the stress, right? Because we are just like on this like high energy all the time to so like hey wait is, is it necessary right which what, comes back uh, to the compassion right how can we be compassionate to ourselves you know we talk about kindness to others but how many of us are not kind to ourselves how many of us put ourselves up on this high pedestal and expect so much of ourselves and if we if we don't hit it we uh we get really bummed out and we feel i know i felt like complete failure in my life like i'm like wow you're a failure steve like at the end of my 20s going into my 30s by 31 i thought that i'm like an idiot you know because i had made so many mistakes and it wasn't until i met uh, jeffrey slater who introduced me to carl bukite who already went there he said oh how many people can have had that many mistakes because i had lost millions of dollars and he looked at me he said how many 20 year olds can say they've lost over four million dollars like you and i was like oh i never thought about it like that he's like wow what an opportunity how many lessons you had and he totally reframed the hell out of it <laughs> you know like and, and i was like oh my gosh i never looked at that i'm like wow you know maybe i'm not such a loser you know <laughs> so it's uh, um but i was i like many of us I think many of us uh, humans living on this planet, we're, we are more critical about ourselves than anything else. And, and to wrap it a, a little bit onto what you were saying earlier, one of your, the mantras that you bring to, to the programs and whatnot is about um, plan tomorrow today. Yes. And it's like, yeah, well, it, it makes so, yeah, whatever. You know, everybody does. It's like, ah, what's important to you? Put it on the calendar. What's important? And that, just that exercise really has to, when we start doing it, starts to shift our own relationships. Like, okay, these are the things that are important. And everything can change. That's the other thing that we have to, um, that is important for us to, to realize. Nothing is really static. Even though the things that we want them to be static, they're not, and for a good reason, right? Because right. we are creating them as we go. So. so, so beautifully said. What do you think, Giovanni? Like we're coming to the end of the episode here. What, uh, if you could get to wrapping on this thought that we're on, what's the one thing you would, you would, uh, want, uh, the listeners to hear uh, uh, like a first step towards this, like what helped you? Cause I know where you are now. You're saying the iterations are quicker, like you're resetting on your own, but like, you know, maybe before that, like what allowed you to take the first step to give yourself permission to be okay with you? Yeah. I think you guys already hit, hit it on the head is uh, it's finding somebody, whether it's a coach or a mentor um, or just a friend who's on the same path as you to kind of just be able to help point things out Say, Hey, did you just notice that you, you did that? Or, Hey man, you're like really beating yourself up for that. Like, just allow yourself, we can bring in the five minute wallow, right? Give your time yeah. to feel it, really feel it. And then once the five minutes is up, then you ask yourself the question, what would I like now? But I think, it, I think unless, which I think if you're listening to this podcast, you're already on that path of um, quote unquote betterment or self-development or whatever it is you want to call it. But it's like, I think you have to be on that journey first um, or at least starting that journey to even recognize that something's going on. Right. I think for me, it was, it's been like, what, maybe nine, 10 years of this self-development journey, you know, to where I'm at today. And it will continue on to the rest of my life, but it's that's wanting to know more about yourself, the, the good, the bad, um, and just wanting to have, have, or be better yourself whatever that means for you. Um, but I, I think you have to be on that path to start to recognize the stuff that's going on, or maybe recognizing the stuff that's going on will help you start the path. Yeah. I don't know. 
so much. It's it's a mix and it's a different journey for all of us. We're going to recognize something. I think uh, Alvaro, you said it right on this podcast that you know you could take the same class, you could read the same book, you could have a conversation with the same person, and they could tell you the same story, and then all of a sudden something's going to be different. And that's why I think that saying the the uh, the teacher appears when the student is ready yes. and that teacher could be the same teacher, but it comes as a new teacher because the words land so much different, uh, in different ways, you know? So I think, um, this has been a beautiful conversation and just some bullets to take away from all three of our, uh, of us is, you know, number one, give yourself time to pause, right? I think you, if you could do the best thing before the end of this year, or maybe it's on new year's day, give yourself some space, give yourself an hour or two, or, you know, if you can more and just uh, go on a walk with yourself or just get a journal and then just, you know, start off with the things maybe you did, maybe if that's coming top of mind, the things you didn't like, you know, the things that you'd like to wash away or learn from, you can write those down. That's where that five minute wallow that Giovanni brought up, just give yourself five minutes to write all those things down. And then maybe another five minutes to think about what you're grateful for. And then I would say, what would, what would you like? You know, start writing down those things to start pondering what you would like. And then the one that I would like to add that we all brought up is like, who would you like to be your mentors? And maybe you start off by going and getting their book if they have a book or, you know, uh, finding time to have a Zoom meeting with them or if you can uh, meet in person, whatever it is, you know, find those things and look them up. You know, I didn't used to do this, but when I read a book now and I'm like, re it's really profound, I look the people up. I'm like, are they accessible? Do they do coaching? Do they take calls? Do they have workshops? I start looking them up now. I didn't used to do that. I'm like, oh, this is an author. They're unreachable to me. No, they're not. And many of those authors, they put the book out because they want to help people. So look them up. They probably have a, a class. They probably have a workshop. Go, go change your life. It's your choice, right? So if you put anything on the, the docket for 2021, put you, put you on your calendar. Yes. Yes. Right on. <laughs> Thank you guys for having this conversation. Um, everyone, I hope you're finishing the year with some smiles and some self hugs. That's what hopefully this episode brought. And we will look forward to having more podcasts next year. I will, we'll, uh, we'll have the next episode next year. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the More Business, More Life podcast. I hope you got value. And if you did, we have so many more things for you at stevenopleton.com. You'll be able to connect with us on social media. We are active. You can ask us questions. And then on top of that, I want to give you a really big gift. And it truly is. We want to give so much value. We have an offering. It's a program called clear path to customers. It's the same way that we attract wow clients and only working with the right people, the people we want to. And it's transformed my business into millions more in revenue with the right people and my clients. And we're doing it absolutely free. So you can go to stevenopleton.com and grab that. You just got to put, put in your information and we'll send it to you promptly. And that again is on stevenopleton.com. I look forward to having you on the next show. Until then, remember, choose gratitude and create freedom.